day it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm and let's talk a little bit about throughput so I like this little axiom or saying that I throw around all the time I heard this ages ago back in the I'm gonna say early 90s and it's that it applies still today you're only as fast as your slowest link so when you have a client and you have a server you need to know enough about the architecture of the network to determine what the slowest link is just there's one big curveball that's hard to document I just want to verbally talk about just a moment and that is sometimes the slowest link is not a physical link connecting devices like a switch and a router and a WAN but sometimes it's a link inside the device so when I do my throughput class I give the students a little spreadsheet with common examples of uh, USB 1 versus 2 versus 3 um, you know those types of interfaces inside devices that would cause performance bottlenecks as well all right there I've said it so let's get on with this so we've got our client over here here I am Tony and the server down here and if we start following the links we'll see I, I have a 1 gig link to the switch and then that has a 10 gig link to the core and then a 10 gig link to the router and then a hundred megabits per second to the WAN or the internet or the cloud whatever you want to call it and then from there there's yet another hundred meg link to the next router 1 gig to the switch and 10 gig to the server so in this case the uh, slowest link is obviously 100 megabits per second so that has to be put into a simple formula 8 bits in a byte so we're going to divide that by 8 and we get 12.5 megabytes per second now why did I do that well because when you measure throughput you typically copy a file and file sizes and directories are not denoted in bits they're denoted in bytes so we need to know how many bytes we're dealing with and that is just a reference so that doesn't factor in things such as device network application or distance latency for the people not familiar with latency it's a fancy term that means delay so all of those uh, three things four things actually can add additional delay on top of all of this which means you get less throughput okay so this is just a mathematical number that we can reference now as a quick review to get an approximate idea for the proper file size we took the bandwidth of the slowest link we divided by 8 and then we multiplied by the number of seconds we'd like to test so for example we had that 100 meg link divided by 8 is 12.5 megabytes per second and then we want a 10 second test for example well then you just multiply by 10 you get 125 megabyte file so it doesn't have to be exact so 100 130 meg it doesn't matter but as long as you know what the size is you can do the math backwards and find out how long it should take now a little just a little tip when I copy files sometimes we use FTP for example and in Microsoft I show this to a lot of people over the years and they're always quite surprised when I show it to them with the Microsoft FTP client supports this option dash s colon and you can create a script that way you don't have to manually download the file every time and you have complete control over your test and this is what the script would look like ftp.ftp and it doesn't have to end in FTP it's just a text file you can call it chickenbreast.txt it doesn't matter and you can see here open the server name and then my login ID and then my password in this case I did a get and if you want to send data or upload that would be a put and in this case 8MB is the name of the file and then quit that's it so of course in the real world you don't run the test once and walk away you run the test minimally I run it five times I drop the low I drop the high and I average the three remaining so in this case you can see the first test was um, it says 1734 kilobytes right and then you multiply by eight and then uh, we actually get 13.8 megabits per second because again these are file sizes they're in bytes so we want bits because we're network people and the second test was 13.44 so you can see they were relatively close well if you want to do a different sort of test you can always go get uh, wget pardon the pun and wget's a neat little command uh, a lot of people from the Linux side of the fence have had this command for ages and you can go get this for Windows as well and in this case I'm simply typing wget and the URL with a obviously a file in this case 300 megabyte file off it went downloaded the file and in this case 1.47 megabytes per second multiplied by 8 it's 11 megabits per second and, and again you would do the test multiple times that's it so I hope that helps 
and please again just do the math and that way you know what you're dealing with and that's kind of the first step of throughput measurement is always walking in with an expectation how long should this take and when it takes much longer you know you have to look into it if you've calculated 10 seconds and it's 12 seconds it's probably not the end of the world but if you calculate 10 seconds and it's 60 seconds then you got a problem you should probably look into so hope that helps have a good day